Inflatable toads. Many frogs and toads are inflatable, most of which use the adaptation to ward off predators. While many of the inflatable animals on this list are males who puff up to lure a sexy mate, female cane toads inflate for the opposite reason. They're playing hard to get. While both sexes inflate to ward of predators, females utilize full-body inflation to prevent a male from grasping them successfully. Such inflation seems to be a screening method to determine mate suitability. A male that can handle mating with the suddenly large female is an especially desirable and fit mate. It's partly due to this rigorous screening process that cane toads are such a devastatingly effective invasive species. Offspring are given the highest likelihood of survival because of their strong genes, which only come from worthy mates. On top of that, their ability to fit almost anything in their mouths makes them voracious predators capable of overrunning ecosystems in the blink of an eye. Frigate birds. Frigate birds are large seabirds that belong to the same order as pelicans, with wingspans measuring over 2 meters across, forked tails and long hook-tipped bills. Frigate birds attack smaller seabirds and force them to drop their meals in mid-air. The birds appear rather drab in flight, but their spectacular balloon-like throat pouch really lets you see that relationship with pelicans. As kleptoparasites, or career thieves, frigate birds do not have to dive into the water themselves for food. Without waterproofing, they are ill-suited to do so. This lifestyle allowed evolution to turn their fishing pouches towards sexual purposes instead. Land birds often inflate through the use of air sacs to produce sounds, but the frigate bird uses a different adaptation in a purely visual display. The air sacs of most inflating birds are linked to the lungs. The frigate bird's method of inflating is more primitive because it has difficulty getting enough air into the throat. Over a period of almost half an hour, a male frigate bird will gradually inflate its guler pouch until it becomes a bright red balloon almost half the size of the seabird. The effect is reminiscent of a beach ball hanging from its throat. Puff adders. Snakes are known for their aggressive attitudes. However, these misunderstood reptiles are frequently acting in a purely defensive manner. Puff adders of the bitus genus take in massive quantities of air and create a substantial amount of noise. The stretchy snakes will dramatically increase in size to scare off potential predators. As you may have guessed, the name itself, puff adder, directly refers to their self-inflation behavior. Many human deaths have resulted from bites when the inflation display fails to provide sufficient warning. The extremely serious effects of the venom include coagulation, nerve damage, and tissue necrosis. Every year, puff adders are responsible for 32,000 deaths in their native range of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, but 90 to 95% of deaths can be prevented with proper treatment due to the slow-acting nature of the venom. Phony strikes, violent sounds, and body shaking combine with the inflation prior to a physical strike. In a case of convergent adaptation, North America's hognose snake, often mistakenly called a puff adder, will inflate itself and bluff while expanding its hood. If the inflation act fails, the snake will then stick its tongue out and roll onto its back playing dead. Bites are very rare and never serious. Elephant seals. The two species of elephant seal are the world's largest non-cetacean carnivores. The northern elephant seal bull measures over 4 meters and may weigh up to 2,500 kilograms. Females of both species weigh only about a quarter of a male's weight. Southern elephant seal bulls, noted on a previous list purely for size, reach an unbelievable 6.2 meters in length, with a weight of up to 4,000 kilograms. Elephant seals are named after their giant, inflatable noses that resemble a trunk. While most animals simply breathe through their noses, both species of elephant seal fully inflate their noses with large quantities of air during snorting contests, which are their form of mating display. The inflated nose resembles an oblong balloon attached to the seal's face. The snout extends an incredible 29 centimeters, around a foot, in northern elephant seals. Sage Grouse Milk glands distinguish mammals, but male sage grouse flaunt air sacs that bear a striking resemblance to the mammary glands of primates like humans or gorillas. The two species of sage grouse are the largest of their type in North America. Measuring nearly a meter and weighing up to three kilograms, assembling on sage-covered leks, the birds inflate their frontal air sacs into two breast-shaped balloons of enormous size and walk around in circles while hooting. By using air sacs that originally evolved as part of the respiratory system, Sage grouse are a classic example of practical features evolving to be used for sexual prowess. Females select males based on appearance and the quality of their hooting and inflating displays. Unfortunately, sage grouse are becoming much rarer due to human encroachment on their breeding habitats and are considered one of Canada's most endangered wild birds. An emergency order was recently triggered for the protection of this incredible inflatable bird. Apes and howler monkeys. 
Being primates ourselves, we are intimately familiar with the body form of monkeys and apes. Lesser known is the fact that some primates, including chimpanzees and gorillas, have inflatable throat sacs. Aside from our closest relatives, the most spectacular examples of primate bloating are the howler monkeys, widely considered the loudest animals on land. Howler monkeys inflate themselves with special air sacs in their throats during communication, territory defense, and mating displays. While the inflated air sacs are mostly responsible for the sheer ear-piercing volume their raucous calls, enlarged hyoid tongue bones further enhance and amplify sounds, allowing the notes to carry farther through dense forests. Male red howler monkey hyoid bones are five times larger than those of females. Skeletal modifications have evolved in order to accommodate these self-inflation adaptions. Males have also grown breastbone notches to accommodate the tongue and air sac apparatuses, the largest New World monkeys are found among the 15 species of howler monkeys. Prairie chickens. While sage grouse have the greatest inflation capacity among chicken-like birds, a smaller ground bird performs even odder displays. The two species of prairie chickens use inflation and weird horn feather displays in breeding rituals to attract the opposite sex and ward off rivals. Native to open grasslands and prairies, these medium-sized grouse hold up horn-like feathers over their foreheads while bright orange air sacs puff out from the sides of their necks. Air sacs are inflated in part due to their ability to greatly increase sound quality and volume, although the visual aspect of bird inflation displays seems prominent. The greater and lesser prairie chickens are among the most bizarre and, unfortunately, endangered of North America's game birds, partially due to habitat loss and rising predation. Prairie chickens boast striking barred patterns and feed on plants and insects. Walrus. The well-known walrus is probably the oddest of the pinnipeds. Males may reach 3.5 meters with a weight of 1,360 kilograms. Lesser known is the fact that the walrus is also highly inflatable. In addition to their tusks, walruses stand out among pinnipeds because of the two air sacs in their necks. The pair of large pouches extend from the walrus's neck and rapidly inflate to a substantial capacity. In contrast with the showboating elephant seals, walruses usually inflate for a different purpose, to help them sleep. These air-filled pockets provide effective buoyancy, holding the air-breathing animal's head above the water as it sleeps. The sacs are also used by the males as resonance chambers to make booming sounds during disputes in the mating season, and to attract female walruses. Pufferfish. Biologists think pufferfish, also known as blowfish, developed their famous inflatability, because their slow, somewhat clumsy swimming style makes them vulnerable to predators. In lieu of escape, pufferfish use their highly elastic stomachs and the ability to quickly ingest huge amounts of water, and even air when necessary, to turn themselves into a virtually inedible ball several times their normal size. Some species also have spines on their skin to make them even less palatable. A predator that manages to snag a puffer before it inflates won't feel lucky for long. Almost all pufferfish contain tetrodotoxin, a substance that makes them foul-tasting and often lethal to fish. To humans, tetrodotoxin is deadly, up to 1,200 times more poisonous than cyanide. There is enough toxin in one pufferfish to kill 30 adult humans, and there is no known antidote. Amazingly, the meat of some pufferfish is considered a delicacy. Called fugu in Japan, it is extremely expensive and only prepared by trained, licensed chefs who know that one bad cut means almost certain death for a customer. In fact, many such deaths occur annually. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.